Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Breaking news. Gotta record this really quickly. I was about to do a podcast on the Nets that doesn't matter anymore. Damian Lillard has been traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. I repeat, Damian Lillard has been traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. This is the world that we're in. This is why the NBA is the best sport in the world. This happens out of nowhere on a Wednesday day at 2.25 p.m. Damian Lillard has been traded to the Bucks. Now, I gotta say, the Heat, Portland saga of like, we're not offering this much or that or that, it's all over now. Portland, as a front office, has been trying to get a name back, but also has been trying to find more packages. I kind of think this deal is not good for Portland, but we'll get right into it. So the Bucks, they get Dame, as we know. The Blazers, they get Drew Holiday, they get DeAndre Aiden, uh, Tomani Kamara, and a 2029 first-round pick. I'm pretty sure that pick is unprotected. The Suns get Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nasir Little, and Keanu Johnson. Now let's focus on things for a minute. For the entire summer, dating back to when Dame axed out, Portland said they wanted to get an all-star back, this and that, this and that. They wanted to get a bunch of return for Dame. And I kept saying in multiple videos, podcasts, Twitter, wherever you want to check it, I kept saying over and over that the market for Dame is not going to be as big as people think, and it's going to involve three teams. Now, the Heat deal would have included way more unprotected assets, younger assets, and more things that they could do compared to this deal. I really don't think Portland has a ton of value here, especially when Woj just reported that they're going to be looking to trade Drew Holiday and flip him yet again. Sure, you might get more assets from doing that, but ultimately the Dame trade is very underwhelming from the Portland side, I think. I think this is this is not a, a great return for them. For the Phoenix Suns, you get off of DeAndre Aiden's contract, but you now have Yusuf Nurkic again, Nurkic is an older player. He's more so of a veteran player. I think he's a better rebounder and more consistent at that than Aiden. But you're adding another guy to the roster who's injury prone, has been hurt at multiple times during the season, is not the best type of defender, can space it out slightly. But at the same time, DeAndre Aiden was really underplaying his contract. And you can tell that there was friction between him and that front office for multiple years. So he's out. I'm sorry. I'm doing this on the run. There is no edits. I literally just read it. I got calls from my friends about this. So we're just here recording this live and direct as soon as possible. Oh, man. Okay. So I got to say this. For the Milwaukee Bucks, the writing has been on the wall. I've been saying this coming into the season. This Bucks team is the team that is getting older. They lack offensive creativity. They needed to have a player in there that could truly bend the defense from the point guard position. And Drew Holiday, as good as he was during his Milwaukee Bucks tenure, he had multiple moments of inept decision-making when it mattered on the offensive end. He would shoot the ball extremely terribly. And even though he could shoot, his spacing was nowhere near the gravity-bending Damian Lillard. It's just not going to be the same. So having Dame and Giannis... Again, man, like that two-man game in terms of what they'll be able to operate on and execute at its highest level, this is going to be high-level hoops from Milwaukee Bucks team that, again, is trying to contend. What we have to keep in mind here is the Giannis comments about, I'm not fully sure if I'm in or not. I'm not all the way sure exactly what I want to do. This is a move made by the Bucks to say, Giannis, we are committed to winning a championship with you. We'll do whatever it takes. And trading one of their big three for a very big, high-profile player in Damian Lillard, who has never played with the top five player before in his career, like he will be with Giannis Antetokounmpo. This is a move you make to appeal to Giannis. And obviously, Chris is not in the deal because in my estimation, Chris Middleton has been the second best player. Obviously, he was hurt last year. But at the same time, the value for Chris just isn't there. Drew Holiday is a more healthy player, plays more defense, and is a bit more portable in certain respects than a Chris Middleton. So it makes all the sense in the world. And also, Chris Middleton, as I said before, has been Giannis's running mate basically since the beginning. So for me, this is this makes... A ton of sense for the Bucks to go ahead and do this. And I kept saying, I really wish I recorded these conversations. But every day in my Discord, links and all that will be in the description. But every day in my Discord, I kept saying, this is a deal 
that is out there. The Bucks are going to make some type of swing move. I kind of felt it, it was on the wall. I just wasn't sure if it was going to be the Dame trade, but it felt like this Bucks team was like on its last legs. Like this is going to be the last real run that they would have with this core. And if Giannis wants out, then at that point, it's like, what do you do to maximize that window? So saying screw it, we're going to throw in our assets to the table and get this deal done makes a ton of sense for the Bucks. And again, they're giving up a 2029 first round pick, uh, Drew Holiday, Grayson Allen. That's what they're giving up. And they get Dame. They keep Bochamp. Bochamp is not in the deal. And that's a huge thing that I did not expect. I thought Bochamp would absolutely be in any deal for Damian Lillard, no matter what the situation was. And the fact that he wasn't just speaks to the madness of Portland. I I really don't understand the decision making from Portland here. And in a way, I think a part of it is the front office is divided. I think the reason why this took so long is they didn't know quite what they wanted. I think they wanted to blend between young talent, but also they wanted to get a name back to either keep or flip for more assets. But I really think this is a lose-lose deal for Portland. I think the Miami Heat package that many people memed and talked about was actually a much better package in terms of you're getting more young assets, you're getting more unprotected capital, but instead you get Drew Holiday, who you're trying to flip anyway for more capital. Like It, it doesn't make much sense to me from the Portland side of things, but honestly, it is what it is. Da- Damian Lillard is now a Milwaukee Buck. And I'm kind of frantic because I'm thinking about it, and it's like we have not seen a blockbuster like this in some time with a player that's been a homegrown player for some years now. Dame has never left. He's always been in Portland. He's always been this guy that's been trekking through, trying to play hard for his team and do things of that nature. But the fact that he is now in this situation with Giannis, he legitimately has a chance to win a NBA championship. And again, like that two-man game and how they can really dominate and the fact that they keep Chris Middleton as their three to basically put up baskets, it sounds great. But now the defensive side in terms of having Drew and Giannis on the team is gone. So they're going to have to figure out things from that perspective. But the offense gets a tremendous upgrade. The Damian Lillard and Giannis staggers throughout a game can also be a thing where Dame can easily initiate offense and bend the defense. It just feels like the team is going to get a lot better from a spacing perspective by just having Dame on the floor. Now, obviously, we do have two more perspectives to get to. The Miami Heat perspective. I mean, this is a team that wasn't willing to compromise for Dame. And I get it. Like, they didn't want to overpay. But it really feels like they got screwed over here because this deal that they got back, I think that he had a better deal. And Portland, I think out of spite, maybe because the Heat were unwilling to, you know, flinch and throw in more assets. I think that they took this out of desperation and that's nothing that Heat can really do about it. Maybe you say they throw in more, but to be honest, given what the market was, I think that would have been overpaying for Dame. The fact that they gave them a better trade proposal than what they got back for Dame speaks to the ineptitude of Portland and to me that has less to do with the Heat. But realistically, now the Heat are a team that has to run things back with no Damian Lillard and they have to compete with a team like the Milwaukee Bucks that are going to have two top 10 players on their roster where Damian Lillard can fit in really, really well with what Giannis does from an offensive standpoint. Like that continuity is there. The Heat are still going to be a very good team in terms of now they keep Tyler Hero. They still have Duncan Robinson. They keep Jaime. They keep Jovic. And you just build with those guys and you keep on going. So from the Heat perspective, it's tough. But I don't think it's the end of the world. I still think they're going to be a pretty good team in the Eastern Conference that teams are going to have to deal with. But this this move really shakes up the Eastern Conference. A team like Boston, who just re-signed Jalen Brown to this $300 million extension, you now have to really respect the Bucs even more than before. I get that Drew Holiday added a ton of value defensively, but the half-court offense, which was lacking severely for the Bucs, and the offensive creativity in those moments, Giannis can now be fully put off the ball in those moments. And instead of Drew Holiday, and even if sometimes in place of Chris Middleton, you now have Damian Lillard closing out those lineups. So for the Bucs, it's a win. For the Heat, it's an unfortunate loss. There's not much they could do. And from the Suns' perspective, I am a bit perplexed. But the Suns, they get more depth. Grayson Allen, good shooter. He can... Well, there, Keon Johnson and Nasir are some good pieces to have. Nurkic, I'm a bit iffy on another injury question, but you are able to get off of the long term money from DeAndre Aiden, so I guess you say that's a win. Man, bro, the NBA is crazy. The NBA is crazy. I'm sorry. I'm going to have a full breakdown podcast 
with Portland fans and and some Bucks people coming within the week. Okay, expect that. Okay, please expect that. But I do have a podcast that I was gonna do with Nets fans. Oh my God, the NBA is crazy. All right, if you rock with the NBA, follow me. My name is Gifted. I do a, a ton of NBA content. A lot of things have happened super duper fast. But I gotta head out here. More content is on the way. Stay tuned to the channel. Like, comment, subscribe. All of that creator stuff that all the creators do. I will catch you guys in the next video. But Damian Lillard is officially a Milwaukee Buck. Wild times. Peace out, people.